Greetings, Spice fans. Silk City Hot Sauce is now sponsoring the Dorkening Podcast Network. Our craft sauces are made in Vermont in small, high-quality batches using locally sourced, farm-grown ingredients. Silk City Hot Sauce comes in a variety of heat strengths and killer flavors like Jezebel, Erotic Fever, Mango Madness, and Good Morning Jonestown. And don't forget our newest creation, Hot Syrup. Make no mistake, Spice fans, this is the queen of sweet heat. There's new and unique flavors coming out all the time. Best of all, right now, listeners of the Dorkening Podcast Network can go to SilkCityHotSauce.com and use coupon code DORK. Not only will you get 20% off your order, we'll also throw in a free bottle of hot sauce. That's SilkCityHotSauce.com. Coupon code DORK. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Ugh, they're so disgusting. Hey everybody, welcome to a very special Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin, and as always, I'm joined by Tony Has Nine Fingers. What is going on, people? And today, we have a very special guest. This is someone I've actually wanted on the show for quite a while. Tony actually went and uh, put the bug in her ear a little while back at a con, but uh, Naomi Grossman, how you doing? Hello, I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. I I'm actually, uh, like, I've li legit for months, I've been like, I want to get Naomi on the show. I want to try. I want to try. And he met you at a con and told you that we wanted to have you on the show. And then it just worked out that the guys from the Talking Dead had you on recently, and they're on the same network as us. So I'm like, hey, hook it up. So that awesome. really worked out. Yeah. Glad it so, worked out. Yes, totally. Um, and one thing I told Tony, I didn't know if I was going to tell you, but I'm going to. Um, I had the opportunity to meet you once. And I chickened out because I was extremely intimidated. <laughs> Little weird. me? It's weird. It's weird. Like I'm super talented people. Fun. I know that, but super talented people, <laughs> like it's like if I'm a big fan, I get very weird around them. So <laughs> one of these days I'll meet you in person at another con. But yeah, this was years ago at like uh, Monster Mania in New Jersey. And you came and you danced in during like Rocky Horror Picture Show. They were doing the the name game. Or you know, the yeah. Yeah, you know I remember about. that. It was a long time ago, but it was it was uh, it was awesome. I was like, this is just another reason why she's great. So I know you, <laughs> I know you mostly from American Horror Story. Uh, you've done a lot of other things as well. Uh, you played Pepper in American Horror Story. You have a new movie that's uh, out streaming now called Bite Me. Um, that's a like a kind of like a comedy, like rom com kind of thing mixed in with vampires, which is very cool. Do um, you want to talk a little bit about that movie? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a pretty much it. It's a vampire rom-com um, love story between a real-life vampire, not one of these, you know, sparkly, mystical creatures that, yeah. you know, only comes out at night, but like a real, like there are actual real-life people that, that, that allege they get their energy from blood. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, living in New York City, uh, you know, in an apartment with roommates like anywhere else. And uh, um falls in love with the IRS agent that, that audits her, like you yeah. do. Yeah, and <laughs> I watched it uh, yesterday. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I want my wife to watch it because I think she would absolutely love it uh, because she's, she's like, not as into, like, horror stuff as I am, but she loves, like, like rom-coms and stuff like that. We watch them together sometimes, so I'm like, you need to watch this movie. Oh, um, that's but, cute. Yeah, yeah I really enjoy it. Especially this time of year, you know, Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah, well, all, all year for her. She watches Christmas movies in the summer, so whatever. Oh. But um, yeah. But um, so so going back into into Pepper, which is where I first saw you. Uh, looking at looking at your uh, other work, you did a lot of comedy. You you were in the Groundlings. You did a lot of uh, of sketch stuff, and uh, there's a lot of shorts that you've done that are like comedic. How like this is a big change. Um, how did you get like 
into this? Like, what kind of research did you do for for Pepper? I mean, it is a big change, and it's not. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just an actor who's trying to work, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the fact is, I went to drama school at Northwestern, and you know, I, so I've, you know, I'm a trained actor, and um, and you know, I got an I got an audition, and you know did did the work <laughs> and, and and got the job um mm. i mean you're right like you know obviously i had never done horror before but at the same time like you know i really cut my teeth at the groundlings doing really big broad character work mm -hmm. and the fact is while pep you know american horror story isn't a comedy by any means mm -hmm. it, it it's the same big broad character work i've been doing all along so yeah. But as far as like research on how to portray Pepper, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of notes and stuff like that. Yeah, but did you no, watch I mean, like I'm, anything specific? Sure. They obviously pointed me in the direction of Schlitzy, the mm -hmm. real life microcephalic from uh, the 1933 film Freaks, which I was mm -hmm. totally unfamiliar with. Um, mm -hmm. But then proceeded to watch on a loop uh, yeah. <laughs> all summer long. In fact, I remember even just, you know, being in my trailer or, 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 or even just offset like waiting to be called to work and like binging you know on youtube like just yeah. you know get schlitzy in there i knew as long as i was doing schlitzy i was doing what they hired me to do yeah and it's the, the thing is too is it's it's very convinced it was very convincing like if you type in your name like on there's a lot of people who are like does she really have this like is it the, the makeup was so good and you were so convincing that I, like that's a that's one of the reasons i was intimidated i'm like she's obviously a different level you know what i'm uh. saying like no for real it's it's so convincing and like even though that that like so asylum is probably my favorite season and you're probably my favorite character in asylum um so it's i don't know too my, my dad like growing up my dad worked in mental institutions in massachusetts and he used to tell me stories about places like that and um you know so it's like you know, it's like, oh, I feel like uh, we have a connection there. That's 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 cool. Like it's it's terrifying. Um, so yeah, it was great. I, I I really I really enjoy it. And uh, I don't know. I'm just gushing. I'll shut yeah, up, Tony. I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, at that point, too, time too. It's like uh, with American Horror Story, each season so different from each other. So you, I'm sure there's like different fan bases from each. And like he said, Asylum was good. I liked the uh, uh, Freak Show as well. And then. I mean, me particularly, being a horror fan, uh, what, 84 or 85 that came out, that mm -hmm. was probably my favorite. But I'm sure, you know, each season has its own, like, fan bases. And I know, I like Kevin mentioned, I met you at a con. Is it like, uh, how is the con experience, I guess, for on, on your side? I love it. I mean, I didn't even know these things existed until I was thrust into the epicenter. I just... It's really unique, you know, chance for me to interact with fans. Like, you know, I, I come from the theater where I get like immediate gratification. You know, I can I can hear the laughter. I can, you know, I can I, I'll I, I see the standing ovation. But, you know, in film and television, like, you know, some of the times you've shot something like a year or two ahead before and and you got to wait. You got to wait years for, you know that reaction and and even then it's like on twitter like it's not the same mm -hmm. so this is you know cons are really my chance to get to meet people and and you see i mean i have good, this like room of fan art it, it's just i guess it's moving to me to think that my art would inspire others art i mean like this is the first stuff i would run for in the case of a fire you know what i mean like mm -hmm. these are my this is these are my trophies. These are the, my antlers on the wall. You know, uh, these are my babies on the you know refrigerator. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, that's awesome. And you you were talking about how sometimes things take forever to come out. And it, yeah, I mean it it must have been like totally just ridiculous to to have to wait. Like okay, we film this and it's gonna be great, but you don't know if people are gonna like it. Um, the, the same can go can can be said for for. Um, for bite me because that was that was filmed in i was gonna say it depends you know american horror story we would shoot only maybe four or five episodes ahead of the viewing public oh wow so when people were like you know in asylum they'd ask me where did pepper go and i'm like 
I don't know. Like, I know they said, don't show, you know, don't cut your hair. That's all I know. But for all I know, you know, I went to the bathroom, like Pepper yeah. had to pee. That's all yeah. I know. <laughs> um, so oftentimes I'm as clueless as, as anyone, but yes, in the case of bite me, oh my goodness, we, we shot this in 2017. In 2018, it went to Cinequest, which is a fabulous festival, um, uh, you know, film festival up in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And um, and then it went they went on their uh, joyful vampire tour of America in which they literally like climbed into an RV and traveled around the United States uh, showing this movie at, I think, a good 50, 50 theaters. Um, I went to the, the Los Angeles screenings and I had pretty much like a cousin everywhere else who, who <laughs> hit up the others. Um, and yeah, I mean, had it not been for COVID, we would have been having this conversation two years ago, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but at least it's out now. But we're here now, yeah. It. Yeah, people can stream it. It's on, I think, every streaming platform. Um, I didn't I didn't look. Is it available for physical media? Because I don't know if you can tell, but we collect. Um, do you know if uh, if it's available uh, for physical media? You know, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good one. I haven't gotten that before. Okay. We will try to find out and then tell yeah, you about uh, it on his shelf. I'll, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. At, at certain points, I'll eventually find it and have it. But yes. it's funny because you said you, I mean, you started with comedy and stuff, but then looking at your INDB too, there's uh, another movie on there, Fear, Inc., that seemed very. I, I still haven't seen it yet. That's one that's oh, on my love like, like like list to find. That's definitely one. But um, did you? Because we've had people on uh, like for horror movies, of course, that said you know I, I was never into horror. It scared me. Like, did you feel the same way and then got into it, or did you like enjoy it beforehand, or how'd that work? Um. I was never really into it until it was into me, <laughs> but almost like dating. It's like, um, oh, you're, you fancy me? Oh, oh, well then, well then let's talk. Um, no, but I, you know, I don't know. My, my parents never, we, I was never exposed to it really. I come from kind of this, I don't know, just highbrow house, household where, you know, if it wasn't uber cultural, we we it, it, we didn't watch. Um, mm. You know, we watched exclusively Cosmos with Carl Sagan and Sunday Morning with Charles Kuralt. Oh, so wow. <laughs> that gives you an idea. Um, I remember actually like sneaking sitcoms, you know, and uh, I remember once also getting caught watching Clueless when I was home from college, and, and my parents were like, "What is this trash?" And I was like. Not that they're British, but you know they're yeah. kind of uptight like that. <laughs> and I was, and of course, I I had my answer already. I was like, you know, this is based on a Jane Austen mo uh, uh, novel, blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden, it was okay, you know, mm. because it had like a literary foundation. Well, so needless to say, we weren't watching a lot of sl slasher films at my house. Mm. Um, so yeah, it just wasn't really on my radar. And then yeah, it kind of just happened to me i fell down this horror hole and i'm i'm loving it you know mm. um at the end of the day like i said i just love big characters so i really feel like i did myself a disservice when i was so concentrated on comedy like i always figured this business is so hard let's just you know find yourself a gimmick and just do that and the fact is there's a whole world out there like i i, I, I it's not that I needed to hone on into comedy. I needed to hone in on characters because mm. that's that's really what I do. Um, and characters, big characters, exist in all genres. So, yeah, yeah. The, the one thing too, you don't want to get uh, you know kind of stuck in a rut too. There's a lot of very talented actors and actresses that uh, you know I'm a big fan of, but they don't do anything but horror. You know, that's why I, like I don't get that. that. Yeah. I every now and then I'll see someone that's like a horror film actor and it's like why a why limit yourself it's such mm -hmm. a hard business as it is you know um but like you know at the end of the day like doing a horror movie is really no different than doing a comedy or doing a drama like you gotta hit your marks you gotta know your lines you need a, you have your intention be clear in your relationships you know know your character through and through like it, hmm. it's 
you know, what does it matter if you're <laughs> cutting up yeah. people or, you know, burying them alive? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've said it plenty of times where, you know, there's a bunch of horror movie cons, but there's no like love story cons. I mean, now they have like Christmas Rom-com. cons, yeah. well, that's drama true. cons or anything like that. So I guess with, you know, the horror community, it could be the greatest thing, but then it could also be the most cynical thing. So right. if you're typecasted in horror movies and you go somewhere else, there's a lot of people that are like, what are you doing? Like, you're changing this up. Why are you changing it? So possibly that could be why. But then there's other people like we've had, we uh, had Kane Hodder on and everybody knows him as Jason, but he does other stuff that it's just like, you know, he can act, but everybody's so used to I want him you to be the big monster who's going to, who's going to murder everybody. Yeah. They, but he's, yeah, he's, and he's really trying to like get out there and do other like speaking roles. And it's, you know, when he does, when he is able to do it, it's awesome, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. Just, it's interesting because like I said, I, didn't come from horror. I, uh, I, I'll go to cons and I'll see these long lines to see someone that I've never even heard of. And I'm like, who is it? You know, what, what is yeah. that? Like the Brad Pitt of horror. And they're like, yes, it is. <laughs> and it's weird to me. Like how they're do just they guys how sitting horror there, have like... its own Brad Pitt? But they yeah, do. Yeah. yeah, they do. There's a, I was at a con, this was years ago. And the, the, uh, the the table for a human centipede like the movie hadn't come out yet but there was a table for the human centipede yeah mm. and um there was a big line that was like going past them just, and then like to the next table and they're like who are these people i don't even know who these people are and it was the guys from ghost hunters and i'm like this is when ghost hunters was like the thing you know and right. I, that's another thing hey talk about a segue you worked on destination truth for a little bit right i did yeah was that something you don't want to talk about? Well, no, it's okay. Um, actually, the producers are very good friends of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, you know, the fact is, it's not my finest work. You know, I wasn't really acting. I was translating, really. I was kind of a fixer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, half the time I was actually on camera, uh, you know, the segue between the, you know, the person that saw the chupacabra and, and, you know, Josh Gates. Yeah. Um, th- th- there was also the o- whole other half of the experience where I was like basically trying to get us the best table at the restaurant and, you know, you name it. And like, that's yeah. the part that I didn't like. Like I wasn't trying to be a TV producer fixer, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but that's kind of what I ended up being because, you know, it's, it's low budget. It's uh um, you know, yeah. sci-fi but network, but, um, yeah. I mean, nothing against what they do, obviously. Yeah. Um, I just, like I said, I, I wasn't acting and that's what I wanted to be doing, Right. but I was on TV and I was traveling the world and I really right. am such a wanderlust. I, you can absolutely pay me in trips. Like it's really? ridiculous. <laughs> when I think of all the, all the things I've done just because I want like <laughs> they offered me a ticket. Yeah. It's it's dumb. <laughs> that's pretty no, it's that's not dumb at all. It's uh it's something that I wish that I have done more in my life. I haven't I've never been out of the country. I've never been to the uh to your coast. I've only been to, I live on the east coast and uh that, that's pretty much the furthest I've been away from my house is Florida. And that's not fun. It's uh No. Yeah. I mean again, nothing against Florida. Um but plenty against Florida. I'm sorry, there's, plenty against there's Florida. There's a whole world out <laughs> there. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of these days. Um, I don't know, maybe when I retire, if that ever happens, but, but um, uh, sorry, go ahead, I was, I was gonna say that you know, at this point in time, too, with um, you know, did I free? I thought I froze there. No, you're second. good, you're good, okay. But um, with you know, traveling, and you were talking about uh, you know, a lower budget films, like I mean, at this point in time, that's what a lot of these um, me, I guess, I can't speak for the entire horror movie community. But that's what we look for at that point in time because that's where you get the different um, plot lines and storylines and all that stuff. A lot of the times this mainstream horror that, you know, people, you know, crap on because everything's the same, I find different in – because that's what we have a lot on here Mm. is, you know, the lower budget independent kind of stuff, which I love. And the other thing I was going to get to is you said you're not, you know, you're you're just getting your, you know, feet into – horror stuff i know us in general we will follow you 
So you do one horror movie role, you get into be, another one. Yeah, don't say that that, that creepily. Sounded very Just, creepy. That sounded very yeah, wrong. Yeah. But in essence, you're your career. You're right. so uh, you do another horror. We'll see your name on it. It doesn't we'll even matter if it's a horror movie. Like I like legit sense American horror story. I'm like, oh my god, it's name of Grossman. Oh my god, you know whatever. And like one thing I love to do too is when people when we were talk about it. I'm like, have you ever seen what uh, the actress who plays Pepper looks like? I'm like, everyone's just like, oh my god, are you serious? That's crazy. I'm like, that's like selling it right there. Like, and that's that's something too. Like that's why another another thing that I just respect uh, is I just don't have like this. I, I'm too self conscious about like everything. So the fact that you can go out there and just do what you do. I would be, I would just have a panic attack, like even attempting it. So that's, that's huge to me. You know, wow, she's so comfortable doing this and she's selling it so well. Like, it's just, it's something to respect. So. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, to me, it's a whole lot less stressful, you know, trying to be ugly than it is trying to be pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This I way know. I can only look better. That's mm. true. You know, Good I'm point. constantly getting comments. Oh, how attractive you are! Like, okay, N no one ever said that before Pepper, but it's I'll because take of Pepper. It. They're like, "Well, I was expecting to walk in and Pepper would be here, but it's different." <laughs> um, but yeah, it's amazing. Know. That's happened before. I've literally been booked it, um, you know, to do public speaking, and and they're confused when Pepper doesn't show up, and it's like. What like what kind of speech was Pepper gonna give? You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like she's not meatloaf, a celebrity. Meatloaf, like meatloaf, meatloaf. you booked me for an hour. Like yeah. that's a lot of grunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, uh, do you have any any other um, projects that are like on the horror end, maybe that uh, that you have coming out or working on? Um. Well, I don't know if you could. It's really a horror. Oh well. Um, I did a film uh, recently called Replica, which stars Mickey Rourke. Um, it's not really horror, but I do play a neo-Nazi meth head. Oh, wow. Which, if you've ever fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole, you know, meth heads in Walmart, it's a horror show, let me yeah. tell you. So um, it's, it's based on a true story, and um, the director was like, Oh my God! You you are Anna, and I'm like you are a neo Nazi. Who's Anna? Head. You yeah. know, and Anna was a real Anna was his sister. So oh wow, who knew? I guess I did an okay job. Um, <laughs> that'll you know that's coming up. Um, I I also worked throughout the pandemic on a new one woman show, which oh, nice. as uh, American Horror Story fans you'll enjoy. It's called American horror story um w-h-o-r-e it's um uh, my own autobiographical anthology of uh tales of self-compromise um hence the whore um so yeah it's uh it sort of chronicles my own little journey pre-pepper post-pepper as pepper um it's uh very fan-friendly and uh yeah, you're gonna love it. I don't. I can't tell you when and where and how just yet, but yeah. it, it is the avalanche is coming down the mountain, and so help me God, you know it will happen. <laughs> so you said it's a one woman show, so it's like a stage performance. Yeah. Um, so I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I've I've done these before. I, I have two prior solo shows that I've taken from you know L.A. to New York to Edinburgh to the. London's West End, around at universities. Um, but at this point, I kind of have my sights set a little bigger. Um, mm. And uh, ideally, it'll be on a, you know, streaming service as a one-hour comedy special. Again, it's too early to say where or when, yeah. but um, that's what I'm working towards. Nice. But that's I think awesome. that'll help that now everything is, you know, streaming, it seems like. So there's a new media source somewhere always popping up every other day so right i mean, I mean who doesn't have a comedy special mm, true i mean remember back in the day when hbo was the only place to go for a comedy special and it was like three a year yeah and now it's like every five minutes that some of them are great some of them are like why did you film this i don't get it but yeah i will definitely check that out for sure uh, i know we're we're coming close to some like we need to take off uh so where where would you like uh your fans to follow you like where are you most interactive with people i know you're on tiktok I know you're on Cameo. Um, yes. 
Yeah. So um, where, where can people follow you? Uh, I'm on all platforms. I'm at Naomi W. Grossman. Uh, although I think my TikTok is just Naomi Grossman. But anyway, I'm verified. So you'll see the blue check mark and you'll know it's me. Nice. Yeah, well, we thank you very much for coming on. Hopefully one of these days I'll be able to uh, meet you at a con and I'll get up the guts to go say hi. Please. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a weirdo. I'm sorry. I get, I get... I get very weird when it comes to meeting people that I like really, really respect, like for talent. Like I'm like uh, that around other, I'm, I'm like that around like, like Tony Todd and like all these other people. Like, I'm just like, you're so talented. I shouldn't even be here. This is crazy. Like, I don't know. Well, that's very flattering. I feel the same way about, I have my own people that I'm like that with. So the fact I'm sure, that, yeah. that for you is very, it's very sweet. I, I remember I was on a, a little committee with Lily Lily Tomlin for oh, a while, wow. and she's really she's literally like the reason I'm here. Like I remember seeing her one woman show, Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, back when I was a little girl, and that's what I said. That's what I want to do when I grow up. Mm, and nice. um, yeah, I was on this committee with her, and I was super weird. Like I literally, it was like it was like a. It's like she was this cute boy in school and I like pretended like I didn't even know who she was. Like it like, oh, wow. looked right through her. <laughs> and it wasn't until like two years into my service on this committee that I finally came out to her and I was like, I just have to let you know, like I've been <laughs> literally ignoring you, like almost to the point of being rude for the last two years because I just didn't want you to know. I, I, I couldn't, I just can't even like, I can't even breathe in the yeah. same, you know, in your space. And yeah. anyway, she was super flattered it was it was the same only i'm hardly lily tomlin but well, lily tom is great i mean i don't get me wrong i would be a little intimidated because i grew up like watching reruns of uh rowan martin's laughing i know she was all over that when i was a kid i'm nick at night and whatever yeah. that's where i know her from so um but yeah that's 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 pretty great that uh you know i, I always wonder i always wonder like is, oh. is everyone nervous around each other like how does this work like i would they be they are a mess. they are be, like escorted but, out of you the know, place just like Lily Tomlin was, I mean, she was literally like, what can I, you know, she was like, let me sign your, you know, I was like, whoa, oh, oh, let's take a picture. You know, she, yeah. she wanted that. I feel the exact same way. So. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate everything you do. And uh, hopefully one of these days I'll be able to tell you that to your face and then I'll awkwardly turn around and walk away. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, again, thank you very much for coming on. We really appreciate it. And go check out Bite Me. It's streaming everywhere. And it's a very fun movie. And uh, yeah, that's about yes, that. Yes, find, find the, uh, that physical copy and I'll sign it for you. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I brought, I brought the uh, American Horror Story for you to sign and stuff. So Awesome. I'm sure no one does that. I'm just kidding. Everyone does that. <laughs> but um, okay. yeah, well, thanks again. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. And uh, to, on to the next one, right? Right. Thank right. you so yeah. much. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bye. Um, so we're going to wrap things up now with us as well. I didn't want to go through all the plugs and everything with her on the, on the call, because I know she has, you know, time. Uh, so Tony, where would you like uh, people to follow you? Uh, you can find me on, uh, Tony has nine fingers on YouTube where I do movie reviews, unboxings, anything movie related. You can find me on there. Tony has nine fingers on Twitter, which I don't know why I still say it because i hardly use it yeah tony has nine fingers on tiktok which i don't twerk or anything you do like that. but you do so maybe 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 i'll find a video of her on tiktok and i'll do edit with my twerk yeah 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 time tony's one thing i didn't up. bring up she, she's like uh she's like acrobatic as well like there's videos of her like holding her leg next to her head like she's like it's it's weird how flexible she is but um so then, that, um, i've seen tiktoks of that that's why i'm bringing it up but anyways Go ahead. Uh, Tony's Movies on Instagram, where I show off the movies behind me. And, of course, here on the Wicked Horror Show, this one's a little bit different. It's on a different day, and it's not it's live. Not live. But yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday night's live, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, whether we have a guest or not. Check us out there. And also check out the Wicked Horror Show Instagram with the same you know, Wicked Horror Show to see what guests we will have, previous guests and all that stuff. So check us out there. And uh, yourself, where can people uh, find you? Just a knuckle on Instagram. I um, I'm on TikTok, but I don't have any videos on my TikTok. Mm -hmm. I I view other people's videos, like the twerking Tony videos, um, and uh, that's pretty much that. I don't really Instagram is where I interact the most, or where I am on the most. Um, 
but yeah, like Tony said, follow us on the show uh, pages and, um, you know, all and the other shows that I'm part of and go to the dorkening.com for more information on all of the shows there. Speaking about that, sooner or later, we might have a link tree, so it'll be easier to find. Yeah, it'll be easier. Yeah. So thanks for listening slash watching. Thanks again to Naomi Grossman for being so great. And goodbye.